Hello, my name is Mike Gaben and welcome to this brand spanking new KSP campaign. Yes, I'm back. I know it's been a little while, but we're back in version 1.7.2 along with the Making History and Breaking Ground DLCs as well as a buttload of mods. Actually, one mod right now is adding this groovy backpack and a uh, little tool to this guy. Uh, some of you probably know what mod that is. And actually, I'm not going to talk about all the mods that are installed. If you want the complete list, I'll put it down there in the description. Um, but uh, I'll talk about them as they come up. There are a couple of them that I do need to talk about right off the bat, but I do want to get into the game very very quickly first but first of all you know I know I've not been the best <laughs> at finishing off these playthroughs uh, time has always gotten the better of me but there is something that's a little bit different that I'll announce right off the bat here uh, I have retired as a full-time teacher uh, yes I am that old um, but that means that I do have a lot more time when it comes to doing things like, well, KSP and making these videos. I do want to get back into making the math videos and the tutorial videos as well. And who knows what other things might pop out of my, well, admittedly rather limited imagination. But I do want to get started right away with this. We'll talk about things as we go. I've already done all the setup so that you don't have to actually watch my setting everything up so the name of the game here is called Uncurbled. I'll explain that uh, pretty much right away so although I set this all up I've not started it at all and here we are and now why Uncurbled? well actually I think I can best explain that by going into the tech tree and you can see here very different tech tree look how huge it is <laughs> and that's after i had a mod that actually removed all the nodes that were empty that were built for other mods that i don't have installed um i do have like if i start clicking on some of these on the outside i have some of these later stage mods these are coming from um the near a number of the near future packs i'll talk about those later because they're not going to impact things right now what is going to impact things right now actually is the start because well this is why it's called Uncurbal. That's the name, by the way, of the mod that adds this tech tree. It also adds a couple of extra parts. It restructures everything so that, well, you're starting with small, uncrewed rockets at the beginning. We'll get into our first ones right off the bat. And then you get into crewed flights, especially crewed space flights later. For instance, down the trek tree right here, this is where our first reentry pods are. And you can see it's the... Um, single crewed kind of uh soviet style of uh, voskhod i think i got that name right <laughs> voskhod pod not vostok voskhod anyway um and so the soviet pods here are down here i like the way that they've separated those style of pods from the sort of more stock pods which are a little higher in the tech tree because they're a little bit more uh well they're a little rug more rugged and they're more expensive than the uh, little roundy pods here. So I like that this has separated them. A um, couple of, uh, what else? Right here we got, for just one science point, I could unlock uh, these tiny structural parts. These are usually quite a bit later in the tech tree. And I've never quite understood that because it's frankly easier to build small rockets than it is to build large rockets. So you should start with small parts and work your way up to big parts. That seems to make more sense to me. Um, but you know what, we'll get into all that a little bit later why don't we start by picking a contract so we'll go into here i've installed a number of contract packs i've never been very happy with the contracts that come with the stock game i need to have contracts though i'm someone i, I love playing career mode i need to have that sort of direction missions to follow objectives to hit um and the main one that's going to come right off the bat here are these seti contracts and uh, there's three of them. Actually, I could probably well, I'll click on available. You can see them better. Some of the stock ones are still popping up here. We have launched our first vessel. We might as well grab that one because that will be easy to do. And then we'll also grab this getting an altitude uh, record of 18 kilometers. We'll make uh, that one of our early ones. So this SETI contract pack, let me get back to here. This contract pack right here is really built around, again, um, 
starting small and working your way up as opposed to you know the other way around of making your very first mission a crude flight we'll get to that later all right let's get ourselves into the vehicle assembly building and we'll build our first rocket and then you'll get a look too at the difference of the starting parts that we have because you'll see right away that it's a little bit different than the stock game so up here underneath uh pods here the only pod we have is the stay putnik uh, uh the very familiar stay putnik one the most primitive of the probes looking nice and shiny thanks to the restock mod that i also have installed restock is awesome it changes the visuals on most or at least many of the stock parts um including some of the engine plumes and things like that but they were very careful to make sure that we you didn't lose any performance in the game which a lot of the visual enhancement mods do um so if you start seeing some of the parts looking a little different that's because of the restock mod uh, nothing under fuel tanks we have one engine here it is the rt-1 mallet engine whoops let me grab that it's a little 0.625 meter uh, SRB that's specifically made just for this. Uh, this comes with the Uncurbled mod. We have, oh, under command and control, I do have, because I have KOS installed that I'll talk about later, I do have a scriptable uh, little, it's the KOS, it's the smaller of the KOS computers, which really won't do much for us because, as you'll see very shortly, I won't have any control of this thing anyway, so putting in any kind of scripts doesn't make any sense. Nothing, 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 nothing. Under aerodynamics, we just have the small basic fins here. We'll add three of these. There we go. That looks all right. Uh, working our way down again. Nothing. We got nothing. We got a battery. Um, Yeah, I'm going to put that on there. I do need... I don't want three of them, though. I will need a battery. We'll keep it pretty low. This is the Z100 battery, of course. Under communications, <clears throat> there is com this Communitron 8, which is a smaller version of the Communitron, the familiar Communitron 16. That's actually coming from the Kerbalism mod, and oh my gosh, is Kerbalism going to change a lot? But we'll get to that later. I'm going to use the Communitron 16S. That's a familiar stock antenna. We'll stick it around here on the back. And let's see if I can get the road. Oh my gosh, I got the rotation right right away. There we go. Uh, I want that because uh, I'm going to be needing to transmit some science. And um, this guy, of course, we don't have to worry about it shearing off. Under science, we have the two hot thermometer. Again, looking nice. Here, I'll take a quick closer look at it. Thanks to the restock mod there looks a little bit different it's been completely remodeled as the battery has right the battery has been also remodeled and we got cargo nothing and utility nothing and that's it okay this is our rocket that's all we got <laughs> as you can see it's not particularly huge now this has no control uh, there are no reaction wheels in this they put Nick uh, there's no gimbling on this SRB and there's no control surfaces on the fins. So to give it some ability to fly at least relatively true, what we're going to do is we're going to, here, I'm gonna turn that, we're going to take these fins, there we go, and we're just going to rotate them just, uh, we'll see how that, oh, 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 we'll see how that goes. So that might yeah, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> um, this will give us some um, gyrosynchronous stability. You'll see how this will work in a bit if you're not already knowing how this will work. Now, up here at the top, I do have Kerbal Construction Time, another big mod that we'll be meeting right away. It's going to take us 39, well, it's not going to take us 39 days to build this thing, but I'll get to that in just a little bit. Uh, let's adjust the thrust to weight ratio. Kerbal Engineer is telling us we have a thrust to weight ratio of 10. That's a little bit crazy. Let's see if we can put it on Atmo because this thing's going to be... That... Oh, 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 I think I like... I had about 1.55... There. 1.55 thrust to weight ratio in the atmosphere, maxing out under 4. That should be good. Alrighty, so... I do have Kerbal or construction time. 
installed. And what Kerbal Construction Time does is to add it's a time component to your builds so that everything takes time to build, not just your vessels, but also upgrading the buildings and researching technology on the tech tree. Now, the worst thing in the world is to spend all this time building something and then find out it doesn't work. So what I also have installed is the crash simulator. It's the button down here. Um, so we'll click that. This allows us to simulate a launch, right? Now, it's not for free. We can see here that, uh, let's see, the setup cost is going to be 346.30 to get this thing to, to simulate. And then it's going to be an additional 52.30 per bucks uh, for each minute after that. So, you know, you have to sort of balance the costs of this. Uh, by the way, while I'm speaking about cost, some of you might have noticed under science, I also had the Kerbal Engineer flight computer. This is what gives us flight data while we're in flight. Um, I'm not going to install it because it costs 1250 curb bucks, which is pretty expensive. I don't have a ton of money and I'll be honest, this is not my first attack. I started playing around with this, uh, this setup, this changes a lot in the game, and in my very first attempt at this, I quickly ran out of money. <laughs> so I'm going to be a little more conscious of funds here, and things that are expensive that I don't need are not going on my rocket. All right, let's start our simulation. We got the great big start button. Hit that, and off we go. And all I'm interested in is how this thing flies and nothing else. So, well, nothing to do but hit the space bar and hope for the best because I have no control. And you can see how this is spinning up. That's thanks to our, our uh, rotated fins there. And it, it's kind of just like a, like a football. Well, an American football. I'll have to apologize to uh, all of our non-North American friends. Uh, but, you know, in American football, when you throw it, it spins, you put a spiral on it, and that's what helps it stay true to its path. And you can see here this thing, it's tilting over a little bit, but it's staying reasonably close to going straight up. Be really groovy if this thing could make that 18 kilometer mark, or just crash past 6 kilometers, but we're about to run out of fuel. Oh, well, that's it. Let's go to map view and see what our apoapsis is like. Uh, we're near 16 kilometers. Okay, that's fine. So let's get back out of here. Uh, let's end the simulation. Terminate the simulation. I think this thing worked well enough. We go back to the VAB. I think, you know what? I think it was spinning just a little bit too quickly. So what I will do is just take these tweak them down. Oh shoot, a little more there. That's a little less of a twist on them. Okay, so we'll, we're gonna call this, what we're gonna call this, this was the mallet. So we're gonna call this mallet. Mallet sounding rocket. That's good, we'll save that. And we got a new button here. This is for uh, Purple Construction Time. We'll click that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add to the building plans. Okay, so that adds the plans for this rocket into our building plans. Let's go out back to the Kerbal Space Center. And we'll take a look at Kerbal Construction Time. So we'll open the Kerbal Construction Time window. And we'll open up the plans here. And under the VAB, you can see there's our mallet sounding rocket. And if I click on that, that will add that into our building queue. Now you can see here, it's gonna take 39 days. That's crazy. But there are a number of uh, upgrade points that I have yet to spend. Let's open up both these windows. There we go. So the game starts you with 16 of these upgrade points. And you can put those upgrade points into a few different things here. We can put them into the vehicle assembly building, the space plane hangar, or the research and development. So let's click on the vehicle assembly building and we're going to start making some improvements to the vehicle assembly building. So we're going to start clicking here and as I click and add upgrade points to the VAB, notice that the time to build is going down. Maybe we'll take about half of these. I think so. 
All right, so now it's, I put about half of these. We'll save the other eight for if I need them in the future. We'll close this. So now in the VAB, it's going to take almost eight days to build. Um, that seems a lot more reasonable. And we have this warp to complete. So we'll hit warp to complete. Oh, I should have <laughs> put my epileptic <laughs> warning ahead of that. So it flashes through eight days of sunrises and sunsets. Okay, we're just about there. This is integrated with Kerbal Alarm Clock, so we do get an alarm clock warning up here. Well, this is great when you start having multiple things going on, and then you get this alarm saying, hey, your, your rocket that you've been building for the last while is ready. So the, that integration with alarm clock is nice. We're going to roll this out. To roll it out is going to take, well, it's a tiny little thing, 5 minutes and 33 seconds. So again, we'll warp to complete. There we go, it is now rolled out, and we shall launch this. We could do all of that from the KSC. It's nice that you don't have to go back into the vehicle assembly building. All right, and here we have our little rocket. Now, science. Science works a little differently now. Uh, let's open up our resource tab so we can see that. So I'm going to take the thermometer, I'm going to pin it over here to the side, and you know, just like normal with a thermometer, there is a temperature scan button, but notice it says stop, and when I push it, what I don't get is that normal science window that pops up. Instead, you can see that it's doing a temperature scan, and it's taking, you can see there's a countdown, it's going to take a little over two minutes, and it's about 0.8 of the way through that and while it's doing that it's actually using up a little bit whoops a little bit of the electric charge here okay so it's going to take a little it takes time now to do temperature scans now if we open up uh where is here actually i think it's let's open up this one there's also a science associated with the probe cores now under the probe core i can do a telemetry report We'll click that, we'll start that. That one will go a lot quicker. It's only going to take 30 seconds for it to do. And you can see it generating data. The data is being stored into the probe core. Okay, so this is our data being stored into the probe core. The probe core, can I move this? There we go. Our probe core does have a limited amount of memory. You can see here it's used up about 70% 70 70 still available. But what's also happening is while it's storing, it's also transmitting. So the little blue arrows here are saying that it's transmitting that information as well. So we're actually gaining, see if I can put it here, yeah, we've gained a teeny little bit of science as this gone, okay? It's good that this is transmitting because this is not going to come back, right? So. Um, that's a good thing that we're transmitting that data because there's if you notice there's no parachutes this this is not going to be recovered it's going up and then it's going to be gone all right so how are we doing here why don't we start time warping a bit uh okay so the temperature scan is now done oh they're both done and so we're just, we'll just wait for this all to be transmitted before we go any further. Just to maximize our science gain. You do have to keep an eye on electricity. That's why I did add that battery on there. I like this mode of science. It's kind of nice. It gives you more to think about, that's for sure. Let's time warp a little bit more. Oh, that's it. Okay, so now we are ready to go. So we shall launch. You're off. Oh, I'm still time warping, for goodness sakes. Why is this thing rocketing so fast? I think maybe uh, the V. The, I think I thought it was time warping, but to be honest, what I think just happened is uh, I think that my that rocket didn't have the thrust limiter on. Can I click on this? I can't adjust it here anyway. I got a feeling my thrust limiter. That thrust was at full bore. We're still going. Uh, that's okay. We're cool. So you can see it's collecting data again. It's collecting both temperature data and uh, all flying over the low shores. Flying low over the shores. How high is this thing going to go? 
Yeah, not high enough. <laughs> Oops, let's put on that data thing again. There we go. So we're not going to get into high space and unfortunately uh, I do not have any control on this so hopefully it's not going to land anywhere that's going to do some damage. <laughs> I'm sure that thrust limiter was at 100%. And again looking up here I can see that uh, the temperature scan well it's still doing the temperature scan it's just transmitting it but as quickly as it can gather the data is what's happening. Still got plenty of electric charge, and oh my gosh, if I was in the Kerbal Space Center right now, I'd be a little bit nervous about this. <laughs> Please don't hit anything. We got ourselves a V2, early V2 rocket coming right down on us. Oh my gooey. I, I think we're okay. I think it's going to miss everything. <laughs> this would not be a good way to start the game, but I think we're good. Not too far off. Oh! And look at that. It survived. <laughs> the booster survived. How the heck did that happen? Okay. We shall try that again. Or not. That was a done deal. So uh, let's go back to the space center. No, I wouldn't mean try that again. But we'll recover that and I'll we'll build another one. <laughs> All right, what is this at? This has got to be at 100%. It sure is. I'm not quite sure how that happened. <laughs> Put this back on that level. Let's get back to what it was at. There. Let's let's leave it at that. That's good. Okay, uh, and we'll save this, and we'll go back to here, and we'll put that one, and that just overwrote the other plan. Well, that's cool. We'll try that again. We'll cl Actually, I didn't even look at how much science do I have now. I don't know if I can see that in here. I don't think I can. Um, I'm really wondering if I can get this thing up to 18 kilometers. That's that like. Let's strip this down. Take this. Uh oh. Just grab the thermometer. Take off all unnecessary sciencey stuff, and if I'm not transmitting, I don't need that anymore. You can, again, that, that took off a reasonable amount of weight because the thrust to weight ratio went up. There. Okay. Um, let's call this the same thing. This is the uh, speed variant. <laughs> that under a different name. Actually, I guess another thing I could do with what I got is I can... What happens if I just, like, put a strap just a whole ton of these on here? Did that changed the Delta V. Not by much. You know, you would think, oh, wow, all you need to do to get up higher is just put on more. But if you look at the Delta V, here it's 1330 meters per second. And here it's a little, it's a little, it's 2012 you know, adding on all these extra boosters really doesn't increase the amount of delta V, which means it's probably not going to really go much higher. And the reason for that is because this thing is so bloody simple that almost all the mass is in the booster. So if you quadruple the amount of boosters, you're just quadrupling the mass. You're not changing things too much. So I'm just going to stay with just a single booster. Uh, let's save this. We'll add. Oh no, let's not add it to the plans. Let's do a simulation of this one. What I'm really interested in is how high can this thing go? I don't think there's much I can do to make it... No, that's about all I can do. So we'll run the simulation again. All I'm interested in is height. I want to see if I can crack that 18 kilometer contract. Alright, so uh, yeah, nothing to do. We'll just... We'll hit this, and all, I'm, all I want to know is how high does this go? Now it's going up, not nearly so stupidly. <laughs> how much science do I have? 3.9 science uh, from that mission. And the spinning is nice, I like this. And it's going kind of straight up, I think it's doing pretty good. A 
little bit tilt. Oh, it's tilting more and more now. Oh, that's not good. That's not good. Because this is, of course, well, it's good if you're worried about it landing back on a building, but um, I don't think this is going to hit 18 kilometers if it goes off on an angle like this. map view, see what our apoapsis is doing. It's now falling nowhere near 18 kilometers. Terminate. What if we spun it up faster? Might that get it to go more straight up? I think it's worth a try. That's what simulations are for, doing little experiments. So we're going to grab this. We're going to tilt this just... Oh, that's not much. I want to tilt it much more because the more you tilt it as well, you're going to be affecting drag. Let's try that. Again, we're just going to simulate it. You know, maybe sticking on all those boosters, it does add a little bit to the delta V. I'm also wondering maybe if I increase the thrust to weight ratio just a little bit. So what I'm interested in is does this go straighter than it did before? Is it not still going off to the side so the extra spinniness is not really helping it going straight. I wonder why the other one went more straight than this one did. Oh! I think... Sorry, let's open up the old mallet. I think I was looking at, yes, I definitely, I was looking at the thrust to weight ratio in a vacuum, not in a, so I think I didn't have the thrust to weight ratio. Yeah, let's go with 1.62 in the atmosphere. I didn't realize that I had the thrust to weight ratio set for vacuum while I was fiddling with it, so I think I did have the thrust to weight ratio too low. That might be why it was going off to the side compared to the other one. Well, yeah, this one's definitely spinning faster now. Because the faster it goes, of course, the quicker it's going to spin. And the faster it spins, the more stability it's going to have. I love the way the fins, the centripetal force is like <laughs> pulling those fins out from the, from the rocket. But they're hanging on. Alright, we're almost there. Again, I'm into Oh my gosh, look at that! 20, 20. Oh! We're gonna get there. Right, we gotta get over 18. Come on. Oh no, I don't know if we are. I don't think we're gonna make it. Oh, it's so close. Honestly, I think that's as good as this little rocket's ever gonna do. Well, I don't know. Maybe there's too much drag coming off of those fins. Now that I got the... We're going to try one more time. I can't stop experimenting. I'm sorry. <laughs> we're going to try one more experiment. Because I had the thrust to weight ratio too low before. And I think now I got the thrust to weight ratio better. Um, but I'm thinking now I might have too much spin on this. Because I had no trouble going straight. This is so get a better mouse. Where about there? Let's try that. Um, let me explain this. So, I think it had enough spin to go straight, but the more angle you put on those fins, the more drag it's going to get. So it's, it's a, you want to have the minimum angle you need to have it going straight, um, because that will be the minimum amount of drag. I think that make, I'm hoping that makes some sense, right? Because if you have too much of an angle on it, you don't need that much spin, and you're just inducing drag for no reason. So hopefully this one now, with a slightly dip, slow, lower angle of attack on those fins, will go higher. We'll have to see. Okay, where are we at? Should have been paying more attention. No, it's about the same, isn't it? Oh, but it's losing altitude less slowly. I think the drag... Oh, 
I'm watching the altitude of the rocket. Is it going to crack 18? Will it get to 18 before this comes down below 18? Oh, I think we're going to make it. I think we're going to make it. I think we're going to make it. Look at that. Look at the altitude here. We are going to crack 18. We have cracked 18 kilometers. So, okay, I have me. Let's terminate the simulation. This doesn't count. By the way, everything you do in simulation mode doesn't count. So, uh, although the notifications pop up, uh, you don't get the money, you don't get the science, you don't get the rep. So, we're going to add this guy to our building list. And after a quick trip to the administration building, picking up a contract to test the mallet on the launch pad. You know, I don't know about you, I kind of like this just fiddling around with limited, I like I don't know. Limitations to me is what creates challenge. So I like these limitations. Oh, I, we must have just got our... Why don't I open up the contracts here? Yeah, we got our... Uh, test the mallet on the launch site contract. Now we just need to hit 18 kilometers. Come on, little rocket. Little rocket, little rocket. Oh, I could have been doing telemetry. Ah, well, I just realized I could have been doing the telemetry science while it was doing all this. Why don't we start that up? We are going to do a little bit of a dip. In, well, hopefully, a little bit of a dip into the upper atmosphere. Now, I did not. I took the battery off, so this thing's going to run out of electricity. Well, it might. Yeah, it probably will. It's almost halfway already. Okay, okay, okay. We are almost at 17 kilometers. Almost at 17. Oh, we got, we got this. We got this. We got this. 18 kilometers. I've never been so excited about such a trivial achievement. Look how high up the air we are. Excellent. So let's, both of those contracts are done. Our electricity is draining. Oh, we cracked over the five science barrier. Oh, that's probably from some contracts. Did any of these contracts give us science? Oh, why am I looking at it through here? Do I not have the contracts plus window? Oh my gosh. There we go. This guy gives us more information, doesn't it? Oh, I think now that it's complete, I don't know. Oh, there we go. Yeah, we got some science from doing the contracts. There we are. In the meantime, while I was feeling around. This contracts plus window, by the way, is great. I, I, I like, I want that all the time. I don't like this little, little view you get from here. But now with over five science, I got enough to unlock a new node. Let's see what we can get. We have four nodes. We have basic rocketry. That gives us, ooh, a bigger, a bigger, better SRB and a liquid fuel engine, but no liquid fuel tanks. And here's where our liquid fuel tanks are. The various size of Oscars. We've got decouplers, a bigger liquid fuel tank. So that's liquid fuel tanks. These are all five. This gives us um, the inline cockpit, which might give me some ability to do some Kerbals. I do want to get some Kerbals going. Yeah. And then attached to that for one extra point, I'm not quite at that, but I got wings. So wing parts down here at the bottom. Oh, oh a Geiger counter. More science. <laughs> that's a wrench. That's for Kerbal uh, attachment system. Some solar panels. Really the basic one. Yeah, the Oxstats. Oh, and a barometer and a little ladder. I always bugged me how, why are ladders in the stock game so high up the tech tree? You wouldn't think that's particularly monstrous technology. Well, you know what? To make that decision, why don't we take a look at what contracts are available? Let's just get to the available. So we have escaped the atmosphere. We can test the mallet. You know, we can get into those altitude range. Oh, that should be able, that should be doable. Oh, uh, haul into a flight above Kerbin. That's a lot of speed. I'm going to get into that. Juno engine. Basic Juno. Splash down. Oh, so I got to land in the water. Which means I got to land. I don't have parachutes yet. 
Striker. Striker rocket booster. On the launch site. That'll be easy. You know, normally I don't go for these ridiculously easy ones, but in this one I think I gotta take what I can get. Oh, I can test both of these on the launch site. Escape the atmosphere, manned. Oh, what's this one get me? You know, let's do the mallet, because I think I'm gonna get that just with flying the rocket that I have. And let's test the striker. Oh, we got a manned altitude record. Okay. But I do want to get Kerbals involved for the next... You know what I think I will do? I'm going to research aeronautics just for this. Just so I can get some Kerbals involved. Um, and then I don't have wings. But what I can do is I'm just going to open that up. Go to our plans. Take that mallet that we've already designed. This is our sciency one. And we'll close this. That's now being built. And we'll do that. That alone should get me the science that I need to unlock the wings. Oh, shoot, 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 shoot. Stop, stop, stop. Good thing that was slow. Uh, tech, I should show this. Notice it's going to take nine days to research aeronautics. So I'm going to get back into my upgrades. We'll bring this up. We're looking at tech here. I want to bring that down, so we're going to go to Research and Development. Now be careful, there are two buttons here. And <laughs> it's important to understand what the two of them do. Uh, the first one here is you get actually science for building, which kind of makes sense. You build stuff, you learn stuff, you get science points for it. The second one is, you, um, is for development, and that's giving you uh, science per day, and this is the one that oh no yeah research about this is the one that brings this time down so for instance if i do this that's brought that time down to just now four days to research aeronautics um how long is this going to be in the vab ah we'll leave it at that again i'm going to save my points I earned some points for unlocking a node, by the way. You might have noticed I got a point for unlocking that first node. Okay, uh, let's... We're going to research aeronautics before this ro mallet rocket. So let's actually put another into the VAB. You can, by the way, set up a second building bay. So you can have multiple things building. I might do that pretty soon. But for now... Actually, to be honest, that might make more sense... Ah, back with it for now. What's this got? Four days for the mallet. We'll talk about that next next time. All right, so uh, let's get some science going. Let's open this up too. Uh, we are not going to be doing this contracts. This is what I like. You can hide that, so it's not your way. So we're going to do this. We're going to keep an eye on our contracts. We're going to get some science happening by pinning these guys off to the side. Get our data window up here. Tuck that there. Uh, and the thing is, what's interesting is you can actually start this. See, it's still gathering some data, even though we fully did one of these. But I have to believe there is a point of diminishing returns on that. Same with. Oh, I hit the battery, for goodness sakes. Where's my thermometer? <laughs> There's my thermometer. Same with this. Even though this one went to 100% the last time we were sitting here on the launch pad, um, you can start it again and see it's it's still collecting some some data, but it can't be that valuable, I would think. Uh, now I'm gonna turn off. Actually, no, we'll let that all go. You can actually, if you don't want them all transmitting, you can actually turn off the ones you don't want transmitting. Like, you can just click that, and that won't transmit that anymore. Um, actually, I think I might do that, because I think this telemetry report, while sitting on the end, same with that one, turn those off, because I don't think they're that valuable. I want to transmit this going up into uh, space one, or, sorry, flying. 
flying low over the shores one. Oh, I should be paying attention to my speed too. Uh, we are at the right speed. Oh, we might be going too fast. We got to hit nine kilometers before we go over 440. Oh, no, no, we just ran out of fuel. We did it. There we go. <laughs> should have maybe tested that first. Good thing we ran out of fuel. I think we would have been going too fast by the time we got to the right altitude. All right, that worked out. Turn that off. And we'll keep transmitting. How is our science doing here? We have now 3.4 science. Roar! We are racking in the science there. Oh my goody goodness. You can see how this is going to be a little more challenging bringing in the science, but that's okay, I think. Oh, whoa, whoa, why is, okay, it's just, maybe it automatically picks what to transmit, transmits what's the most valuable, I don't know. I, sus I assume, too, it's paying attention to the transmitting rates of the antennas, of the antenna. Maybe it's a good idea to put on more than one, maybe you can transmit stuff more quickly. Ooh, something to explore for next time. Because there's a maximum amount of data that can be squeezed out of the antenna, and, um, Clearly, I'm not going to transmit all of this before I hit the ground. So maybe it's a good idea to put on more antennas. Something to think about. Do -do -do -do. Gonna survive again. The booster, I mean. Oh my god, that's. Look at that! Oh, just like I planned it. <laughs> and then it allows us to go into the space center, and we can now unlock wings. So that'll give us some wings. Take a look here. What is happening with Kerbal Construction Time in the tech department? Oh, so in less than an hour, we'll have aeronautics in just under six hours. So that's just under a day. We'll have wings. Um, cool. And we'll build ourselves some sort of a plane, get some Kerbals involved. But, you know, I think that's going to be it to be for the next episode. Let me know what you think. I'm not worrying so much about length anymore. I'm letting you see my puzzle through these things. Let me know what you think about that, or do you like the sort of shorter, quicker edit type of videos? But in the meantime, I thank you for watching and hope to see you again next time.